shown uh, a great understanding for our views and our geographical situation. Uh, so our common view is that a solution to this should take into account Iceland's specific geographical situation. Uh, it's a good thing that she just flew her, <laughs> prevent possible carbon leakage, but also address the fact that the green solutions in aviation have not yet emerged. However, I will also, would also like to make it completely clear that Iceland wants to contribute to the common goal of reducing emissions, and, and that is absolutely uh, our common understanding on this. So thank you, thank you, Ursula, and please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Kathleen, and thank you for having me here. Um, and I want to congratulate you and your country to the very successful presidency of the Council of Europe. Um, I'm very much looking forward to this summit. It comes at a very relevant time. We've discussed it. Um, Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine raises fundamental questions about democracy, about the rule of law, about the human rights. And I want to particularly thank you for putting the question of justice for Ukraine and the accountability of Russia. Um, at the heart of your presidency. This is very important. I also uh, want to thank you and the people of Iceland for the generosity and the support you are constantly giving to Ukraine. As far as I know, you welcomed almost 3,000 refugees with open arms. You donated vital supplies and energy equipment. You are channeling important economic support to Ukraine, so many, many thanks for that. We have an excellent bilateral cooperation, and I should talk now about 10 minutes about what is all going well, but we do not have the time for that. Indeed, uh, turning to the bilateral relations, um, there are a few topics we went a bit more in depth, uh, besides the excellent cooperation that we have and the seamless work uh, that uh, takes place between our different uh, respective teams. So, of course, the overriding uh, topic, the first one, is climate change and how to fight climate change. Iceland knows that better than anyone. We are both concerned about the impact and convinced about the need that we do have to act. You have to decided to do something um, about it with your ambitious plan to be carbon neutral by 2040. And I am deeply impressed almost to, uh, already today, almost 100% of your electricity production in Iceland comes from renewable. Mm -hmm. You know that we also have ambitious plans to reach climate neutrality by 2050 and there, of course, to develop renewables as much as possible. We want to reach more than 42% of our energy consumption through renewables by 2030. So we must address the emissions and that's the reason why we have started the emission trading system. The emission trading system is market-driven, it's very successful, but of course we have to take into account the specific situation of Iceland. And I think um, we have found a very good common understanding. As you said, uh, subject to some fine-tuning still, but in our case this is, of course, that we have to have the approval of the member states, but I'm happy that uh, we really found a solution that is compatible with your specific situation. It is compatible with our integrity, our common integrity of the single market. And most importantly, it uh, is also respecting the long-term goals of climate protection. Well, uh, this is it basically. Um, there uh, were smaller things we were also discussing, but I want to thank you again for the excellent cooperation and for the fact that you are an outstanding presidency of the Council of Europe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now there is time for a few questions. For a few questions. Not uh, so many, though. No. A few short ones first. Andres Markerson from Multiple Newspaper. Yes, uh, Madam President, uh, uh, happy to hear that you made such uh, progress on the uh, emissions, uh, well, aviation emissions. But how quickly do you think you can uh, formalize that? Well, I think we have to, as I said, uh, you have to fine tune here and we have to speak with our member states. Um, so the idea is um, that Iceland um, gets a offer to have free allowances that Iceland can give in not only 25 but also 26, 2026. 
Um, and it is important that it is possible to give that to all um, airlines, so there is a level playing field. It's a question of, um, of fairness. And um, therefore, I think we have now to consult our yeah. stakeholders with meets the 27 member states with you. It's your stakeholders, you know better. Um, but we basically found a solution that is compatible. And we need to obviously discuss this within uh, the Icelandic government, the Icelandic parliament. So obviously, there remains a lot of work, but we think we have at least a common understanding of what needs to be done to find a good solution to this. And now we have you, Anna-Vitis Schattadotti, from the Icelandic uh, National Broadcasting Services. I would like to ask you about the Reykjavik summit that is starting in Reykjavik today. What do you see as expectations from the Reykjavik summit, especially in the field of the, the peace process for Ukraine? Yes, I think um, there, the Reykjavik summit comes absolutely at uh, the right time. Uh, first of all, it will be a big uh, topic will be the accountability of Russia for the crime of aggression it is constantly committing uh, by waging war in Ukraine. Here I'm very glad that we will have the register of damages, which is so important for justice, and justice is one of the preconditions for a just peace. Mm -hmm. But also over time, also when we think in terms of reconstruction. So it's an enormously important judicial element to have this register of damages um, to give justice to the victims. What peace is concerned, we have a very clear position. We support strongly the peace formula of uh, President Zelensky that he has put forward. This, I think, is the basis from which on we will be working. And this has then to be discussed, but um, it is very clear that we have a principle, nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. Um, and therefore, Ukraine as the victim of the perpetrator, Ukraine as the victim has to be the one who puts out the basic foundation of a peace formula which, which we then can work. President Zelensky, I met him last week, um, is very open to discussion. Um, but important for all of us is this is the basis from which on we are working on. And this is what we are going to be talking about tonight, mm -hmm. how we can actually proceed, built on the basis of the Ukrainian peace formula. We have the Ukrainian prime minister who has just arrived here to Iceland. So uh, I am hopeful that that discussion will actually help us to proceed to a just peace. But I must also agree with Ursula, peace cannot be without justice. And one last question, Elizabeth from Channel 2 News, Iceland. Thank you, madam. Uh, is the European Union going to increase their support to Ukraine? So, uh, we have, of course, we will uh, stay and support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Um, there are two types of support. The one is the financial support. Overall, by now, we supported Ukraine with 68 billion euros. Um, if you look at the different elements of support, and then there is the military support. This is more a question of the member states, but there's a strong commitment of the member states, of course, also here to support Ukraine. So as we know that the Ukrainians are fighting very bravely for their sovereignty and the integrity of their territory, um, they are fighting for principles of the international law and the UN Charter, and therefore they are fighting also for us and um, it is for us, therefore, a noble task to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Okay, so thank you so much, and we'll meet again. Thank you. Thank you.